everyone. Welcome to Have a Chat. I'm your host, Audrey Lynch, with my stunningly gorgeous and co-host, Veronique Arsenault and Judy Loge. Hello, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Judy went. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Oh, well, I thought I, I thought I would just start off the day with the the most positive thing I could think of to say, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know there I you do go. I do I think highly of you both beautiful gorgeous stunning women and I'm I'm just ah. thrilled to death that I get to do this show ah. with you guys every week. <laughs> well, you back at you. To pay you later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Enough with all the fun and games. We want to welcome our viewers today to a great show that we have lined up for them. We have two amazing guests, inspiring guests that we don't want you to miss. So definitely curl up on the couch or your comfy chair and join us because it's going to be a great show. Um, we like to start off our show with a positive quote of the day. And Berenice, honey, you're up with a quote for us today. I am, and, and I'm, I was inspired, of course, by Halloween coming up, and so um, this one absolutely spoke to my, my little joyful heart this morning. So uh, it's a quote by Robert Bro, and he says, there is a child in every one of us who is still a trick-or-treater looking for a brightly lit porch. Aw, I get really I emotional when I hear that. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's it so is. nice. It's, it's yeah. so true. I mean, yeah. It's that feeling of hope, right? And that excitement when you see the light on, you're like, what am I going to get for PFE? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so um, I, I'm not I, made a... the mistake, I made the mistake of buying my Halloween candy a few weeks ago. Oh. I have, I have eaten half of this... it. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's why I haven't bought oh, much yet. I'm going to go out tomorrow and get more because I don't have enough. But that quote, oh, for I love sake. that quote because I also think of going to people's homes as a child. And I think like Veronique and Audrey, you're waiting for their expression. If you have a really cool costume on, I mean, I hadn't done that in a long mm. time as a teenager in my you know middle teens. But as a little girl, I remember thinking, what are they going to think of my outfit? What are they going to say? Are they going to love it? Are they going to be creeped out by it? Um, and now I, I think that my reaction to the kids I get at my door is just kind of what that whole quote is about, the excitement that I give back to them because I'm like, oh, look at you. And I mean, if there are some fabulous costumes out there and work put into these little creatures every year by their parents and, and the kids themselves are so creative that it's just, it's a magical time of year. Yeah, it truly I is. Agree. Yeah. I remember getting so, so excited and I would have to say, you know, putting my costume together, I really worked, you know, a little harder than just putting anything together mm -hmm. because the excitement of showing, you know, my costume was part of it as yeah. well as receiving the treats. But what I do notice, and you probably notice around the Miramichi area right there now, I'm, I'm like, I'm not a, I love Halloween and handing out the treats and, and getting dressed up and things like that, but I'm not a big decorator as far as out in the yard with lights mm. and different things. And the decorations now have, you know, they're quite elaborate. I don't know if you've been driving around Arr. the city, but yes. I, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not one to do it, but I absolutely love mm -hmm. driving around and see those people who do put that effort in. They're just fabulous. Mm -hmm. They really are. And I want to give them. A, a big hand for yes. you know putting in all that effort and you know making something for the kids to enjoy and to celebrate Halloween. Right, right. I think I'm more yeah. excited for birthdays. Birthdays in my family are even more uh, special than the occasion of Halloween itself because I have my son uh, Evan, my firstborn, mm -hmm. our firstborn. I I gave birth, so hey, I'm going to call it my child. Um, our okay. son, in all fairness. Uh, was born on Halloween at about 6.30 in the evening, and he's turning 30 this year. Oh, my gosh, I'm oh, a 30-year-old. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so I am I love him, and happy wishes to Evan. Um, he's a great young man, so proud of him. And then my nephew, uh, Aiden, my brother's boy, is born. He will be 28. He lives in Montreal. Um, he works for CCM, and he will be 28 on the he will be 28 on the 28th of October. Ooh, okay. And then my sister's, my sister's son, Trent, is turning 14 on Halloween. So 
what can I say oh, about birthdays and Halloween? It's just it's just crazy. Two sisters with babies yeah. and Halloween and a brother with a son born on the 28th. And they're all great kids and happy birthday to them all. Yes. Love Actually, it. today is my son's 20th birthday, Reese. Oh, and uh, nice. he was due to be born very, very, very close to Halloween. But luckily, yeah. I had him a few days earlier, and I was actually yes. home from the hospital, and him and Aww. I were handing out treats. Oh, so cute. I was an so old happy witch. Birthday. I was a real, my costume when I was giving birth was an old hag, a screaming, oh. yelling hag. Oh, my <laughs> With goodness. sweat Not was possible. my costume. Sweat, sweat and claws. I had it all going on in that Halloween. <laughs> Not possible. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so either. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, we want to mention uh, in other news, uh, we want to say that we are very, very, very thankful um, due to an unfortunate accident that our Mamashi Timberwolves had over the weekend uh, traveling to a, another part of the province uh, for a hockey game. And they did have a, a collision, and unfortunately, there was a death during that accident. But it was not one of our Timberwolves, the hockey players, and uh, it was an unfortunate event. And um, just to say how thankful we are that they are all okay, and I you know the game was canceled, but luckily that's the only thing that happened as far as them. But our thoughts and prayers are with the with the family of the uh, occupant of the other vehicle that uh, unfortunately did not make it. Yes, and, and, and like you said, thank God um, for these players. I didn't want to, you know, when I heard that of an accident, um, they're part of the Maritime Junior Hockey League, of course, the, the, mm -hmm. the Timberwolves. The kids, the young men come from all over the place. They're recruited here. And mm -hmm. um, I, I was just heart sick. I thought, first of all, when I heard bus crash, I think of Humboldt. And also the accident mm -hmm. that took place in Bathurst when we lost those uh, amazing young uh, members of the Bathurst community um, basketball team. And so my heart was sick, but and I was so sick when I heard about the, the lady that lost her life. Um, mm -hmm. So for that such a sad situation of the person's life being taken, we give great thanks uh, for saving a whole busload of people. And, and they will need trauma counseling probably because that's that's a horrible mm -hmm horrific experience for the bus driver and for the family of the woman who was deceased probably gathered around mm -hmm. and the players themselves. God bless them. God bless them all. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure whether or not I know my brother was recently talking because his son Spencer actually plays for uh, Grand Falls and he's going to shoot me for not remembering the name uh, in the same hockey league. Mm. So he will at some yeah. point be coming to Miramichi to play against the Timberwolves. Um, but he was mentioning how, just traveling um, in a big bus, many different hours, being tired and traveling all across the province. I'm not really sure how we can make things safer as far as, you mm -hmm. know, our sports players and things like that, having to do mm -hmm. such travel and traveling in such, yeah. such large numbers. Because I know he, my brother mm -hmm. was actually traveling and it was quite foggy that night. And he Ooh. was quite nervous to see large buses like that holding a lot of team players, you know, traveling yes. and, and just thinking yes. of that. So I'm not sure what the answer is there mm -hmm. as far as being able to make travel safer for our players. But mm -hmm. um, definitely thoughts and prayers mm -hmm. when they're on the road traveling to do games. Yeah. And, you know, we wish them the best of luck this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. So in other news. You were you girls were actually informing me before the the show started um, uh, something that I didn't know and um, which was a, a horrific accident that happened on set of making a movie. Now, Alex Baldwin, you were telling me. Yeah, you know, it, it, the news came out on the weekend that Alex Baldwin was on the set of a movie, is and uh, I believe it's his production company as well. But um, anyway, he um, the. Uh, one of the prop uh, people handed him a live gun rather than, um, you know, a, a gun that would uh, normally fire blanks. And uh, he shot the gun and, and killed uh, someone, uh, I, I believe one of the cinematographers or photographers on set uh, and injured uh, someone else as well. So it, um, you know, I can't even imagine uh, what that would have been like as a, 
as a moment and on that set and, and for him to know that, you know, that that's happened now as well, that he's been part of that. So, you know, again, condolences to the family there. And, and, um, it's funny, you haven't heard those stories in a long time. It used to happen not more often, but you did hear them, you know, in some of the older movies that, um, you know, either actors were killed or people on set were killed and things like that. But now, uh, you haven't heard it for quite some time. So it's a little bit of a, a shocking story to hear, but yeah, Alec Baldwin was involved in, in that incident. Helena Hutchins was 42 mm -hmm. years old. She was from Russia. She was a very well-established cinematographer, uh, making a big in the film world, a, a very big upcoming uh, name and well-loved. She was a wife and a mother to an eight-year-old, a beautiful young woman. They said exceptional person uh, and gifted artist. And I mean, uh, the, the person, the electrical engineer that was standing right beside her shoulder to shoulder, he, he, he expressed himself. He said, you know, no one is putting blame, even the father of this young woman whose life was taken, her father, I, and I don't believe her husband is putting any blame on Alec Baldwin, unlike a lot of the people out there in the, in the media, uh, you know, what people are like, mm. they're just, they're just yeah. to, to spew off about his past. Um, altercations with the law and his temper or his drinking problem, whatever, that's irrelevant. The man is absolutely mm. devastated. And again, her father and husband are saying that they have no, um, you know, blame put on Alec Baldwin that's all to do with the gun control, the unprofessionalism, and um, just the whole thing was, was handled so, so poorly. And it was negligence is what they're saying. Yeah. It wasn't the actor's yeah. fault. And he's like my husband and I were saying, Alec Baldwin will never be the same man again. I, I, yeah. I can't even imagine. I mean, you're on the set of a of a film and and such a freak thing. He went to do a crossfire aim, and like I said, the electrical um, guy was right beside her and caught her, and he died right in in his arms. You know, so what a oh. what a scene that would be. And it was in Santa Fe, Mexico. Yeah. So yeah. Um, he's that a that would have been horrific. Baldwin, horrific. He's a you know a human being and. I was really upset with uh, Donald Trump Jr. I know what he was trying to say, um, but he was going around um, saying, you know, uh, guns don't kill people. Alec Baldwin kills people. That was, oh, it was, wow. that, was that was on his website. He was selling those T-shirts that actually said that Donald Trump Jr. And I was mortified. Um, I guess what he's saying is that um, how's that expression go? Guns don't kill people. People kill people. But what he's, mm, yeah. that's what the expression is. But what he's what? saying is guns don't kill people. Alec Baldwin kills people. It's like, it's personally right. making him a, a killer. It's, it's labeling him as an yeah. intentional killer, which is far it's from awful. the truth. It was an accident. It's terrible. No. Yeah. So, exactly. Goodness. Healing and like all. you said, yes, exactly. Thoughts and prayers with the family for sure. Veronique, did you want to fill us in a little bit on what's been happening with council here in Miramichi? We're all dying to know. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know that uh, we'll need to have Mayor Lorden on, you know, uh, soon to, to, mm. to give us some, uh, some great updates. But just to kind of right. let everybody know, um, last week was actually a pretty monumental um, regular council meeting for us uh, as a new council and for us as a city. And uh, there's been a lot of work. I mean, you know, we got elected, uh, we got sworn in, I think it was June 1st. So we got right to work um, and spent the summer uh, with a consultant working through um, a strategic plan from council that would really determine um, the way that the, the direction that the city would take over the, the coming four years. And that plan was developed with a lot of consultation with, you know, people in the community, with city staff, with council and, and a lot of back and forth. And that strategic plan is really going to give us a roadmap on what to focus on over mm -hmm. the next four years, where to put our money and how to make things happen. And um, it mm -hmm. also came with, so that, that was adopted last, uh, last Tuesday night. So that was, uh, the motion was made and that was adopted. And that comes with concrete goals and deliverables, meaning that, you know, um, each year we're going to have that checklist on what we accomplished and what we didn't and, and how we need to, to kind of move forward. Mm. So that was number one. That was a really big deal for us. Uh, number two, what we heard most often throughout the, the election campaign through the spring was the need and desire for an active transportation plan. So active transportation right. is defined as not in a vehicle, right? So not in a traditional car or truck. 
Um, you know, mm -hmm. and we are typically a, you know, a, a vehicle kind of community. We have been for a long time. And, and I know that when Kate was on a few weeks ago, um, talking about the transit system that, you know, we haven't totally embraced that yet. But what we heard most often from people or what I heard, and I know that my council colleagues heard the same um, throughout the campaign was we needed better ways to get around the city that didn't involve a motorized vehicle such as a car or truck. So whether it be, you know, bike paths or walking paths or um, improved transit or a way to connect all areas of the city, because mm. also, you know, not all of us can afford to buy a car, right? And so um, we need mm -hmm. to make our city accessible to all. Um, so that there was an active transportation plan developed over the summer as well. Uh, and actually from last spring uh, as well. So the uh, original council that was that um, uh, was there before us uh, did initiate that discussion. And so we also adopted the active transportation plan. And again, that comes with very concrete deliverables, meaning that we have a timeline on when we're going to start projects, what those projects are going to be um, and, and how we're going to pay for them. So, it's yeah. uh, you know, we often have plans uh, to meet, to plan, to plan, and to meet, right? And then we never quite mm -hmm. get there. Uh, but in both of these cases, these are true action items that are going to happen over the next four mm -hmm. years um, to not mm -hmm. only improve the way business operates around our city, uh, to improve, you know, uh, uh, tourism as it comes into our city and to attract more of that yeah. and to really help bolster our city's economy and support our citizens mm -hmm. as they are here. So those were two huge right. things that happened. We are so excited and I'm looking forward to what's to come. Mm -hmm. You're doing a wonderful job and you love it, Veronique? I do. I, I absolutely do love it. It was the best decision I ever made to put my name on that ballot. And every day I am so excited that I get to work th with the people that are around this, the table, but also the city staff. They have incredible yeah. gifts that they are absolutely willing to help me learn from. And I, I've yeah. loved every minute so far. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing, Veronique. And to our viewers, don't go away. We'll be back with more Have a Chat after the break. Welcome back to Have a Chat. Joining us now is our first guest, self-advocate for Down syndrome, Lauren Tozer. Hello, Lauren. Hi. Hi, Thank Lauren. you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, first, before we get talking about our big subject for today and why you're here, can you tell our viewers and us a little bit about yourself personally? Okay. I am 25 years old. I have two older brothers, and I live in Clinton. And I work as so I work at 1809 West Fun and Bar, White City. I love my job, and I love everybody being there. Ah, uh, we love That's the broad. sweet. One of yes. my favorite restaurants. Okay. It is. You were, yeah. Um, Lauren, yeah. this is huge for a lot of us. And you, of course, um, this is Canadian Down Syndrome Week. So all across Canada, this is being recognized. And what exactly for uh, people out there that um, don't know much about this whole week and for yourself, what does Down Syndrome actually mean to you? Well, it's access special. Um, like most of Down syndrome has 46 chromosomes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and all Down syndrome has 47 chromosomes. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Hmm. Okay. Good to have the facts. So, and Lauren, you know what? You do a great job at the rod. You, you, um, You've uh, served us quite a few times, my mom and my dad and I. So I really, really want to tell you what a great job you do every time we come in as a customer. And one of the one of the big questions I want to know is what are some of the okay. the 
personal goals that you have that you've actually been able to achieve? Well, um, I got my driver's permit. And I also, yeah. And I have my own. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's fantastic. How did you study for that? Yeah. How did you study Um, for that, Lauren? Like, like how long did you do that? How many? Seven years. Seven. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Good. You did that, though. That's a big. That's a big thing to get done. Yeah. Sure. And how many? How many yes. tries did it take for you to pass, Lauren? Like three. That's, that's pretty good. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not too bad. My kids. My kids took two or three tries as well. So. No, at least you know your stuff now and it was worth trying and getting it. And now you have your driver's permit and then you're one step closer to being, uh, you know, a responsible driver for in getting yourself yeah. to and from work. So that's a fantastic goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you how do you feel, Lauren, about actually like the highways are so crazy and uh, drivers are so dangerous. You just don't know what you're going to meet out there. Are you actually like on the road comfortable or do you just drive around other areas where it's safer? Well, I'm not on the road yet. Um, I'm still driving at the store parking lot. Okay. So do you like to go when there's not a whole lot of people around to practice and um, back up and do all the different things that everyone has to do as a driver? It's tricky driving for sure. Like Audrey said, a lot of people yes. take a long time to get their license, and some people never get their license. So you have your permit, and that's that's a big thing. Good on you. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Lauren, I hear that uh, there's a few other things that you enjoy doing. I heard that mountain climbing was something that you really enjoy doing. Um, can you tell us yeah. a little bit about how that came about and what mountains you've climbed? Okay. Um, when COVID are happening around and me and my parents talk that I I'd be training to climb a mountain that I'm ready for it. And so is it which mountain that you climbed, Lauren? Mount Connaughton. Oh okay. where is yeah. where is exactly where is Mount Carrollton exactly for us like me who doesn't exactly know? I by St. Quinn. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how long? How long? How did that become one of your goals, Lauren, to to climb a mountain? Well, um, I but I enjoy climbing a mountain, and I get help on the way to. It's very hard to climb a mountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, hard. Like I've never mountain climbed, so how does that work? Do you get lessons in how to do it, or who taught you how to do that, Lauren? Did you go with other people first of all, or your one friend, or grandmother, or who? Um, actually, my father Jonathan and my uncle Eric King. Nice. It must be hard. I've never climbed a mountain. I've done a little bit of climbing, but never that extensive. So you've done a lot more than I have, actually. Cool. Yes. So you you didn't do it all alone. It sounds like you really like the outdoors, Lauren. You seem to really enjoy that fresh air and to be able to to take on a challenge like being able to climb a mountain. That takes a lot of training. Like you said, you train for it first. And you were able to do it. And I want to commend you on being able to achieve that goal as well. That's absolutely fabulous. I'm not sure that's something I could do myself either, Judy. Uh, No. And, of course, she's a lot younger, right? So that's a plus, too. Yes, definitely. (laughs) For sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren, so you are featured in a beautiful video that I happen to have access to um, that the viewers are going to be watching. Um, oh, Canada. 
tell us how you got to be the star of such a beautiful video that aired from every prop, pretty most, uh, well, basically from all of the provinces in Canada. But for you in New Brunswick, how did that come about for you to be part of this? Well, I'll be Yo, chosen by, okay, well, I'll be chosen um, by sending the email and we go to hop a walk that I had seen on Canada to withstand the new metric. Uh, it's wow. absolutely, it's, it's just beautiful. beautiful, girls. Yeah, the viewers are about I can't to, wait to, see that. to hear it. Mm -hmm. It's been yeah. really, really so, nice. Lauren, is it true that you um, have had a movie audition? Actually, I did. Oh, wow. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, I had a couple of callbacks. And yeah, I had a um, couple of callbacks and I did three scenes. Wow. You did three scenes? Okay. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about it, about the movie, what you had to do for the audition. Okay. Um, well, I am like actress, so I'm in the different actor name, mm -hmm. and the movie is called "The Son and His Daughter." Okay. Okay. Mm. And where did you film that, Lauren? Um. Well, we do like a Zoom call audition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was an, an audition. Yeah. yeah. What character did you play when you acted out your scene for the audition? Um, it is um Sam, um Samaya. Samaya. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Wow. Are you comfortable? With, uh, do you like doing Zoom calls, Lauren? Are is this something you do like? I know you've been auditioning for a movie and you've done all Canada where you've had a film set behind you and now you're on Have a Chat, which airs province wide and is also on YouTube. Um, so this is, you're getting, you know, you're gonna have a name for yourself out there pretty soon and you're becoming popular. Does any of that stuff make you nervous at all? No. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Well. Not anymore. Not even a That's bit. great. You, you can yeah. give lessons to people on how to be chill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So tell us, tell us a little bit about. Okay, you've done like you know, like Judy said, you sang in, uh, in a commercial. You you've done uh, auditions for a movie. What do you see as uh, looking forward for future goals for yourself, Lauren? Well, I like to take lessons and play a piano. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And we all and have our dreams and goals. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't play the yeah. piano. I'm not good at it at no. all. <laughs> no. And I can't sing either. Although I like to sing <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I, I'm in that same <laughs> boat as well. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't sing a note. I couldn't carry it in a wet paper bag. And uh, as far as playing an instrument, I, I would say I have rhythm, though, if you want to dance. If you're if anything you're doing, Loring requires extra dancers or backup dancers, like give me a call. I'd love to I'd love to audition if you're doing anything else in the future as far as that goes. But I'll, I'll stay out of the singing yeah. and, and instrument playing for sure. Yes, and hey. I, I like. I can play the piano a little bit, but I, I bet you're a lot better at it than I am. There's no question about that. I took lessons as a kid and then I just, it was like, ugh, I don't know, pulling <laughs> teeth. So I kind of gave it up and I just poke around a little bit at it and I do do a little bit of it, but Lauren, um, you're, you're sticking with it. Do you still play the piano when you get a chance? Like, do you like yes, to play a lot? I do, but we have no piano at, at the house this minute. No. Okay. You know, and they, and they're a big thing, you know, to put in your home too. They take up a lot of space. Lauren, what mm -hmm. are some of the other things that you really find interesting to do? What are some of your hobbies, interests? 
I loved um, listening to some country music. Uh -huh. Country and music. And I, I love country music the too. Do you like that? painting? Yeah, the diamond, diamond painting. Yes. Oh, the diamond painting. Oh. Yes, I have one of those. Okay. I'm not finished it yet. It's 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 quite it's quite detailed um, and time consuming, but I find it very therapeutic at the same time mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. concentrate on something so intricate. Yeah, yeah, it might take me like thirty-four hours or thirty-five. Take me like a week. They done. But they're oh, pretty though, goodness. and they're done. Nice yep. ones all finished yeah. though. It's rewarding, rewarding, Lauren, right? To have that, that, to say that I did this all by myself and it, it's relaxing. Like Audrey said, I don't do it. I used to do a little bit of this and that needle pointing and things like that, but um, I kind of got away from it. Maybe I'll start again now the winter's coming. It's a good thing to do, have a little hobby to yourself. What else do yeah, you like yeah. to do? Well, I like go on the Holly Dixon with my dad. Ooh. <laughs> wow. She does a lot of things. That, you do a lot of things that I've My never, goodness. ever done. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been in the back of a Harley Davidson. Well, Where do you I go with go, your dad? Uh, like everywhere, like town or a mountain or something. Fun. Fun. Oh, oh um, book trips. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Now, Lauren, do others? We, no. um, we know that the Special Olympics are really, really important. So talk to us about um, what sports you play in the Special Olympics and, and why you want to, why it's really important for you to be part of that. Well, I'm in swimming, um, bowling, basketball, and talking field. Oh, that's a lot. I'm involved in an Izzy girl. <laughs> Yes, it is. It is a lot. What's your favorite? And how long have you been doing that? Um, well, my favorite is um the swimming. I know I love it all, but I love the swimming one. Swimming Good for you. Yeah. You. Yeah, I, I don't know how you I love the water schedule. Yeah, she she gets a lot into her schedule. This young lady, I must say. And you like fashion, like Audrey and I and Veronique do. You like to dress up, and and you like. What's your favorite thing to wear? Well, I like wear dresses, and I like wear something fancy, like. Yeah, but you do. Lo I love dresses the most too, Lauren. That's my number one thing in clothing. I don't get a chance to do it during COVID. I'm mostly, you know, more casual like the rest of us. But it's fun to get dressed up. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today, Lauren, and, and the fact that you're a self-advocate for Down syndrome and that this is the week um, for Down syndrome, uh, the Canadian Down syndrome week for awareness and, and everything that's going on. Thank you for coming on and talking to us about your life and everything that you're doing to keep busy um and you have so many goals and and you've achieved quite a few of them already and it's great to see such a young person with great inspiration and aspiration to to go out and just conquer the world and do all that you can do and not let anything hold you back yes that's right so awesome thank is there any you. last words? thank you lauren you're welcome uh, thank you is for there, having yeah. me on just I said, and thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, that girl sweetie. In the movies. Yes. yes, we'll have you back again, sweetie. Talk to you later, and thanks for watching. We'll be back with more Have a Chat after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back to Have a Chat.
Joining us now, I would like to introduce the Executive Director for Habitat for Humanity in the Moncton area, an advocate for affordable housing, lifelong learner, ambitious leader, enthusiastic public speaker, Chantel Landry. Hello, Chantel. Hi, someone read my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing a little research. I did, I did. I didn't want to miss anything. There's so much to be uh, to be commended there for you, Chantel. Now, you've, mm -hmm. you've been on the show before, and we're welcoming you back. But can you tell us a little bit about who you are for the viewers who might not know? Right. So uh, I've worked in not-for-profit organizations in the greater Moncton area for, actually, I've, I've lost count because I've done so many contracts. So I believe in, in helping the community in various ways, whatever mm -hmm. I'm passionate about. Um, there's definitely no lack of help needed <coughs> in my communities. So uh, yeah, so right now I've been with Habitat for Humanity Moncton um, for the past five years. Uh, making it mm -hmm. uh, where it is today and hopefully hopefully bring it to the a new level in the next few years. So, yeah. Okay, so like I said, we've had you on, but a lot of people may have missed the opportunity hearing all about it. So what exactly is Habitat for Humanity, Chantel? So um, many people are familiar with Habitat because you hear about Habitat for Humanity all over the world. Uh, mm -hmm. It is thankfully actually mentioned many times in different mm -hmm. movies and TV shows because it's huge in the United States uh, mm -hmm. where it originated. Um, so Habitat believes that everyone deserves a decent place to live everywhere in the world. So there are Habitat right. internationals mm -hmm. that build shelters in countries that are third world countries, but it also exists mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in New Brunswick and there's three affiliates in New Brunswick and we believe that home ownership is the way forward so it helps actual um, people find a solution and out of whatever unsafe and unaffordable housing that they have and so we believe that yeah. home ownership is the way to go okay amazing Thank you. yeah and and absolutely you know it's it's uh, if you um if you don't have shelter um or at the very least affordable shelter it uh, changes just about everything in your life. So um, amazing work that you're doing. Talk to us a little bit about yes. the history of Habitat for Humanity. And, and you're right, so many of us do know that, the, that label, I guess, that you know, um, uh, name of it. But talk, talk to us about the history of it. Right, so it started in the US in the 70s uh, by this couple that actually ended up traveling abroad and was building shelter. Mm -hmm. And for people in need, and they're like, wait a minute, we can actually do this back home because there's a need back home um, when you actually look at what the issues are. So they started in Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, and it just grew from there uh, and then came to, the United, to Canada in Winnipeg. So they wanted to recreate it here. Um, and then it just spread like wildfire. So um, now in, in Moncton itself, we uh, incorporated in 1994. Um, we also in 1999 opened our restore, which we'll, we can talk a little bit more about it later. Um, but we're a social mm -hmm. enterprise, uh, so across the U.S. and Canada, every Habitat for Humanity also has a restore, and so that restore is a retail establishment that allows us to cover all of our operational costs, so that when we do fundraising, mm -hmm. it goes directly to build or rehab, uh, rehabilitate um, homes for families. Um, so mm -hmm. that is the, the, really the, the essence of what we do is we bring community together. So we don't just go and build yes. a house. Um, we actually get the community involved. So the house is built by the family, mm -hmm. um, and, and by every community volunteer that wants to get involved and business. So, and community yeah. groups. So everybody, uh, you, it, it really works like it used to work where, when you wanted to have a house built. <laughs> You had to have the whole community involved or else it wasn't going to happen. Yes. That's exactly how Habitat builds everywhere in the world. They bring people from everywhere in the world to build homes. Um, so that's yeah. really how it works in its essence um, is that the whole mm. community comes together. Yeah. Love I think it. One of yeah, the, love I, it. Think, I think one of the most famous um, uh, people that volunteer with Habitat, Habitat for Humanity is former President Carter. And he's, I think he's 95 oh. now and still hammering away, still building. And, Imagine. You know, I, I, I think I always see those pictures of him and I think, isn't that yeah. amazing? 
It I, is. Yeah, actually, that's, that's a good point because uh, President Carter, when he finished his term as president, mm -hmm. decided that Habitat for Humanity was going to be his uh, charity of choice and he was going to be a champion for Habitat. And his wife mm -hmm. was right there with him. So yeah. he picks nice. a country, a different country every year to mm -hmm. uh, build homes in. And so in 19, I don't know, sorry, in 2019, I believe it was, he picked Canada and ended up oh, going really? to Edmonton. Yeah, and, and Edmonton and do projects out there and build in Canada. And he, yeah, he's 90 and he's on roofs swinging hammers mm -hmm. and yeah. doing the work. He's not just there to look and look good. He's there to do the work. No, that's no, why. absolutely. Yeah. That's it's impressive. Fabulous. Very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Chantel, you had said there's three affiliates in New Brunswick itself. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the housing situation in New Brunswick at the moment? Right. So we have three affiliates, Federation St. John, uh, Federation St. John and us, who cover the entire province. Um, and although we only do, I, I say only home ownership because we're only part of the solution, right? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is definitely an issue of, of, of housing affordable housing safe and affordable housing accessible housing all over canada but it's not we're not immune in new brunswick by 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 far um and i believe that as a province we need to look at all of the needs and make a major plan that addresses every step of the housing continuum and when i talk about housing continuum i mean everything from homelessness right people who live in a homeless situation, they do not have anywhere to live, all the way to mm -hmm. market home ownership. So we fall between um, market rental, or even some of it. Some of the people that we have that come into our program do are in social housing, actually. So they skip the market rental and go into affordable home ownership. But we're usually right in the middle, right before market rent, market home ownership. So we help families who are really want to be homeowners, never dreamed that they could potentially even be homeowners. And then all of a sudden realize, wait a minute, you know, maybe I've made some poor choices in the past, but I've struggled and I've worked hard and I've accomplished so much. And Habitat gives that opportunity to that family to change their lives. Literally, it does change their life. Um, so mm. I believe that the type of solution that we offer is something that needs to happen for all of the different housing needs across the continuum in, in New Brunswick, for sure. So on that note then, regarding the housing continuum, um, talk to us how the, um, the province can get on board and address all of this and you know put it all together, um, all the different aspects of this whole notion of the continuum. So if you look at all the different not-for-profits in New Brunswick, a lot of them overlap services. And some um, urban areas offer services that aren't being necessarily offered in other urban um, areas, like Miramichi, for example. Maybe we're offering it in Moncton, but not Miramichi, but we both have the same issue. Um, mm -hmm. It's the responsibility of the province to help us get together and make sure that we're actually utilizing the funding that's either coming from the feds or that is generated in the province to address those issues. So there's a lot of outdated programs, for example, unfortunately mm. within the province um, that the government offers, but they're not actually addressing the needs of today. They're old programs that have existed for many, many years. I'm not saying that people don't utilize them, but I think if you give it to a nonprofit, we know how to stretch dollars and make them work. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. We, we've been doing it for years. We offer it. We know the issues. We know the solutions. But more solutions are available when we get together and we put money together and we put resources together and actually take the time to create an actual mm -hmm. a strong plan. New Brunswick's in a situation, mm -hmm. in a position that we're so small that we can take big solutions and adapt them to us and make long term impact on our population. So right. I think that if, if, yeah. if government and not-for-profit work together and have business involved, why not? They also know a lot of the solutions, right? They, they mm -hmm. just do it in a business capacity. If everybody gets together, we do it for so many other things. I don't understand why we can't do it for housing. It would make perfect so sense. Feel like, and thank you. Yeah. So you feel like these programs that, that do exist could use some updating? 
Yes, updating and finessing to so that people aren't, you know, because the people who are accessing them shouldn't mm-hmm. be frustrated and trying to access help. You know, it's it's like anything else. It's like mental health. It's like health in general. It's you know, it, it's like any other service. You know, we we mm-hmm. put up a fuss going to a restaurant when we don't get the right service, right? Because we're paying for it. Yeah. Well, your tax dollars are paying for the services that are accessible to the people who are in need. We should be fighting exactly. for people to get right the right service for the needs that they have so that they have a decent quality of life in New Brunswick. We want to boast about New Brunswick and people come here and we want them to move here or stay here. Yeah. But yeah. If quality of life Absolutely. is there for everybody equally. Why would they want to do no. that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So sure. tell us about um, the tell no, go ahead, Verney. It's okay. Um Talk to us a little bit about the the issues around affordable and accessible housing. I know from a municipal uh, perspective, we're looking at tackling that and have been uh, here in Miramichi in in the best best way that we can at this point. But talk to us about that as an issue as a whole. I think when you hear municipalities are now looking at housing and finding solutions, that's when there's a bigger problem. Because everybody always says, oh, it's the province. It's It's the federal government. That's their responsibility. Well, no, it's everybody's responsibility. And when so many, when your municipality is like, hey, you know, we want to be part of the solution, that's like, wow, it's it's starting to impact um, more levels, right? People are, are being impacted more directly um, about housing. And like you said, if you don't have shelter, it's pretty hard to be able to do anything yeah. else, right? If you don't have a stable place right. to live, um, right, and to call home. Yes. So, Housing is definitely, that's, and that's just one component. That's just regular housing. Then you have to look at, okay, how about if we have larger families? What if we yeah. have need for accessibility? I've had many people from the area of Miramichi alone uh, contact us because they don't have accessible housing. That's a human right. I can't even imagine oh, having yeah. to, you know, carry my child up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs mm-hmm. because... Yeah they don't have an accessible house or a place to live. No. Um, it's an issue everywhere in New Brunswick. Um, of course, yeah. we're actually building right now in Dieppe for a family who's in social housing. Um, they, yes, they happen to be a large family, so they do need a larger mm. home. But really what brought it to the next level was they needed an accessible house and they didn't have one. Mm. And so it oh. became a health and safety issue for the entire family. Um, so that, you know, there's so many different levels when you ask about housing is, it's, it's more than just housing, right? It's, it's safety. Yeah. It's, it's, it's being able to have, um, a warm bed to lay at night. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's it can even basic- trickle. It can, I, I was just saying the thing that keeps popping in my head, because you said there's, there's, it, there's so many other issues that go along with it. And I can remember my daughter. Um, doing a project. And like you said, uh, being in a house and having a roof over your head is a civil right. And everybody Mm -hmm. should have access to that. And she did a huge project. And um, she was coming to realize that it even affected people being able to get a job. Um, Because if you didn't have a permanent address, you couldn't apply Mm -hmm. for the job. And you couldn't get a permanent address if you didn't have a job. And it just kept bouncing back and forth. And it was she said, she said, mommy, the system's broke. It's, it's, there's, you know what I mean? It's just a vicious yeah. circle and you can't mm-hmm. get ahead. And she was just so taken by that. And so frustrated by that, mm-hmm. that she's actually taking global affairs right now in Spain, hoping to get herself mm-hmm. in a situation or in a position where she can fight for these kinds of civil rights so that, you know, everybody should have food on their table. Everybody should have a roof over their head. Those yeah. are the basic needs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, and and it and it starts with housing because once you start losing or don't have the basic necessities, then it affects everything else, right? So there's mm-hmm. there's a reason why we spend so much money on health because if you don't have your basic needs met, your health suffers, and so therefore right. it's just cycle. And if your health suffers, then how are you supposed to actually be able to sustain anything else in order to? right? Get a job and then sustain yourself. <laughs> so it's exactly. a constant vicious cycle that we live in. Mm-hmm. And so, and then we blame it. And often people get blamed 
for not working or not having a place to live or being homeless or being poor. Um, right. When poverty, poverty mm-hmm. is, is, is an issue and it's huge. It's, um, yeah. It's almost a disease um, that <gasps> is um, causing a lot of more issues in this province than people realize. It has a huge financial it, cost it, too. So, yeah. It's horrible. It's all horrible. We take so much for granted and these are just like, we just take myself and, you know, us on the set, just take having a beautiful home or shelter for granted. But, you know, just what you described, if you don't have a basic shelter, all else fails. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. No, so everything exactly. that we can do even bit by bit, I mean, we, you know, is, is, is what's most important. And the families that we've helped in the past, I can say with confidence that most of them are, you know, have more income and their families are doing better and they stri- and they're actually, I would say all of them are proud homeowners um, oh. and they're building equity and they're building pride in the house that they have. There is no way that you're driving anywhere and you know which one's a habitat house because they're just like any right. other home. Um, Good. You know, exactly. we, these are hardworking families that are um, working towards paying a mortgage. Right. So we don't give homes away. Yeah. We they pay a mortgage. They pay full market value for their house too. They pay property tax. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're um responsible well, homeowners. Yeah. Well, we're almost out of time, mm-hmm. Chantel, if you can believe it or not. Can you quickly add uh any future projects coming up? Absolutely. So um I would encourage anybody to go to our website, habitatmoncton.com, and sign up for our newsletter. Uh, because as most people have probably heard we are waiting on confirmation about land and miramichi so um that's what's coming so we hope that this is just one of many to come for years to come yeah you're doing a great job excellent job thank you i appreciate uh, you taking the time to have me Mm -hmm. it's so wonderful chantelle to see someone in this field who shows such uh, passion for her job and for her work and has such heart as well to go along with it. And we wish you the best of luck and uh, many, many goals to be reached with your future in this career. You're doing fantastic. Keep up the great work. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to all our viewers. From all of us here at Have a Chat, have a great day and we'll see you next time.